Okay. When are we going to do it, folks? I don't know what else to say about all this. We either put up uh, what we need to put up to stop the nonsense, or it takes us over. We're going to have to find out how to do that, and we have to do that on our own. We have our own skill sets to do that. And there's going to be lots of times that, uh, because it's a new idea, that we take responsibility. We stop letting the the people that have a ring in our nose uh, pulling on, tugging on it. We finally figure out if we got the ring in our nose and pull it out. And deal with those people that are continually uh, in control because they have been for quite a long time. And I don't mean just in behind the scenes. They're right in our face now. I've talked to you, I talked to you about the process of it, the method, as we called it, in our lawsuit back in 2013. There's a whole process by how, how this works. And it's not secret. Uh, what's secret, apparently, is our, in our action to, uh, against it. It's secret to me because I have not seen it. And until we change that, dire things are really coming upon us in lots of interesting ways. And there's no, anybody who's just paying attention and not, not got their head in the behind a woodshed bucket of sand. Did you get yours? Oh, wait, we're not having the market up yet for it. Anyway, uh, you have a, your head, your head in the be- behind a woodshed bucket of sand. Unless you've done that, you look around, you're gonna, you should see quite a bit of problems. The, the cage that's coming up around it, the surveillance system. Uh, the things that I keep telling you, you could stop if you just understood. It took more time and interest in, in, in preparing the future, preparing the way, a better way, a better future for those that, that are coming up behind us. Uh, for me, I have no no response to that. I I don't have someone coming up behind me. It's all of you and y'all and your progeny and all that. So I don't know what drives me to make this better. Uh, I don't I don't get all emotional anymore. It used to be an emotional roller coaster. Uh, because I had an expectation of certain things that just aren't available right now. Now they're they're there, but they've been obstructed and have been occluded. They've been uh, obfuscated, and uh, we have to go to the point of understanding what that is, and then going beyond, and well, doing what it's going to take. I, I don't know to stop this uh, nonsense, uh, to stop the thing that we see going on, the, the insanity that that continues to. Be it well, it's the insanity. And we try to reason with it. The other thing, we try to think we can outthink it. We think we have a, a, an input. Uh, and again, before I go too too far, uh, the, this is a BTW RLM two eighty eight. I think it'll be. Uh, and uh, so we uh, tend, and I notice I've been noticing this around lots of people. I'm seeing more and more of it. Uh, those that uh, believe that they are, they are. Uh, think they have it understood and they did again the researchers of history they're not turning around and applying it they say oh we got to know history to 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 avoid the future well avoiding the future is an application avoiding the future i'm talking about is not avoiding the future that's coming it's avoiding the one that's want to put on you and so i see lots of people want to make uh, there's a big disconnect i was just thinking about this right before the broadcast so i'm off my my point of where i was going to go but it's not really uh, in here it's um everybody makes up an ism an ist uh, something they're they're connected to, or they want to focus on to keep them keep their focus, which is okay, I guess, as a guidance. They want to get take a, a title for themselves instead of just sitting back saying, "Listen, I'm just a man in the world, just a woman in the world," and this thing has gotten out of hand. There's people out here that have really run roughshod over lots, and it's not right anymore. Uh, instead of taking a title, uh, they uh, they uh, even even one that seems to be to me the biggest problem. People think they know stuff. Because I've read history and I research, I know stuff. Well, we only know what we can find and dig up, and we don't even know that. It's, it, the point is, is that you have to get, you, you have to get um, beyond all of that uh, to get to the future that you need to make, because it's happening now. What we do is we look in the back and we pass, and we say, okay, that's how they done it to us, or that's how they done it, whether whether it was to us or not. That's how they did this. And then looking, if we need to, if it's applicable, looking forward and saying, well, whoa, we might be in that same condition here. Now, how would we stop it if we were then? We are then today. How do we stop it? That's the only time we need to actually look back. Otherwise, we have to take what we have today and deal with it today. And how it, 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 how it can be, uh, we can affect it. Or if they have the word now today, is influence it. And that's kind of what we're doing. We're nudging. We're trying to, the we're, people I work with, myself and the people I work with, we try to nudge people uh, in the right direction. Getting them back into the, the what appears to be the proper the proper limitations of an authority that was supposed to create an environment for all of us. Not, not in the 
in the equal rights sense where it's extortion, but in the in the lack of imposition that we can live and attain our highest virtues, not by the constructs. Well, again, quite a few constructs are here. We don't tend to want to focus on those. A lot of people don't want to listen to it behind the woodshed uh, to find that out. And it, it's it's clearly, 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 uh, it's, I don't want to take this. Uh, it's not because of what I, I mean that I know so much of what I say. Uh, there's people that just don't want to read the black and white. And those that are the gatekeepers, that when they do, they don't want to talk about it. And that's what I'm trying to get you to get past. You, you're going to have to get past our thoughts about the past because it's all disconnected. It's all disconnected. We make our fantasies up about what we think, think, it, think we, we want to do, and it's not, it's not connected to the past. We've already lived as people in all of history. And so then we say, oh, they don't talk about it in the past like we're supposed to see it today. Well, you, you've just made a fantasy for yourself. And I'm saying stop all that. Stop messing around with your head. Stop putting your ego in this like you have to show some importance. You'll be important. You'll find out that you're important once you start act, taking the right steps. It's not you're not knowing so much. It's knowing what you need to know and then applying, turning it on and applying it to a problem. And, and, and I don't have to, myself, I don't necessarily believe what I am doing is so so important because I can find it all written down before me. So it's not what I'm what I believe. It's not how I'm finding it. It's not because I'm talking about it. That, oh, I'm some, all of a sudden, I'm some importance. Well, I'm telling you is I'm a, a witness to what we've done and what we need to turn around and do because of what we have seen in the past. But we can't tarry on the past. Again, we talk about revolution. I said that's a broke. We got to break that wheel. We have to forge a new direction, not, not the one that someone's the future we want, like we heard in one of the UN things a few years ago. And, and I don't know if anybody keeps up with that, but that was just one year. The next year they had another motto, and the next year they had another motto, and the next year they had another motto. And the one coming up for 2019, you should read about. It's fascinating. They're telling us what's happening. It's all a lie, but the point is it's going to happen because no one understands how to intercept it. And uh, not no one. I do. We do it all the time. And when you start getting on the narrow path, you start to see the clarity of all this stuff. You also start to be able to identify very quickly who's the who the usurpers are. It doesn't mean you can handle it, but you see who the usurpers are. They don't become a focus of your of, of anger. They become you know, the obstacle to getting the future that you want. And you, there's a, a methodology you're going to have to figure out. I, I can't even do that here because it all depends on what you face. But you're going to you're facing it, and whether or not you stand up and address the future for the little ones, it's the future for their future. You want to talk about future generations? Yeah, think about what's being left to them when you're in our inaction today. Okay, I paused enough. Are we thinking? Are we just listening? Are we not really contemplating what I'm saying? This is serious, serious stuff that we're kind of holding out. Uh, there's a whole lot of things we can point out. We get all focused on how almost. I just look at it more of the ego. Look how good we can work on the work on figuring stuff out. Those are just mind puzzles given to you, based on any kind of information, whether that's good, bad, or indifferent. It's just information, and they get you working on it. And what the problem with that is, you're not working on what you actually need to work on. And then again, the only real thing I think it's valid is that only we have to work on things that are local, local to us. I don't know how to solve the world problem. I can only look over there in the world problem that's over there, outside of what I have a, a tangible connection to to do anything about. I look out there. There's no borders now. I look out there and I see, wow, there's a lot of chaos, and it's all the same method. And I go, oh, well, I can be instructed by all how they do that. And so here's a here's where I guess I'll get back into it for that provision that I keep talking about in in all of this. Uh, and uh, excuse me, I'm just looking at. I got a notice that my audio is not good. I was hoping it was a whole lot better, and uh, it's looking like the signals are coming out fine here. So I don't know what uh, what to say. I, again, I've been having some problems. Once my system almost took, got taken down, I really haven't been able to get it back. But right now it's looking. All my signals going out are fine. So if I can get another radio check on the, uh, maybe more specifically, and I can give you some, I can take a look at something, uh, anything uh, would be helpful. Thank you very much for the feedback on that. But let me get over to how I keep telling you this is a, um, it's a global thing. It's uh, working in your, right in, in your face. Uh, we have little indicators. It's uh, things that, uh, again, I can't do anything about, but I look at some of this to see well, actually, I'm looking more than any more for a shift in 
in the methods, in in the in the issues. Uh, we had a, a situation of going outside of the country uh, over to the dynamics of geopolitics and the skullduggery of and CIA and the United States of America, what it does and what it doesn't do, and all the things that go on in the Machiavellian world that we understand is there and works. Uh, again, you know, we come up with that as people. That's us. That's not the nature. That's just nature. And so we got to start to understand there's a reality about our what we do as people. And there's a ra- reality about what we don't do as people. And that's the kind of, that's the cricket part that I'm, if I hadn't seen uh, the effect of not being a cricket, then I wouldn't talk to you about this. And I can't say we can solve all problems quite yet, but I know that more the people that actually step up and stop being that cricket, the proverb, if I can say it's proverbs, because it's not, but the proverbial cricket, uh, the, uh, the idea of silence, not, and non-action, is, is, uh, we gotta get really beyond that. We gotta find the things that we're gonna find. And like I was saying, just as it occurs to me, like the First Amendment auditors, get a purpose. It's not just to walk in and make a hassle on people. Get a purpose behind what what the effect of the occupation is and attack that. Don't walk into places just to make up a big noise about how, how right you are to be in a spot to be able to do or oh, take a picture. I mean, there's I listen to the things and I listen to this for specifics. And the cops don't know. So why you, that's just a, that's like um, messing with the retarded, someone who's retarded. Why would you pick on that? I mean, it's there, yes, and it needs to be outed, but not for the purpose of, oh, look what I just did to the cop. Uh, no, because I listen and I find out there's also errors, serious errors in what people are doing. And to me, it's pretty quickly roiled down, boiled down when you start talking about, the, it's because a lot of it's just a territorial dispute. Uh, it really boils down to the Eisenhower documents, uh, the document, the two-volume set of uh, the king was asking, uh, what, what is my terrain? What, what do I own? What do I control? And there's four jurisdictions. And if you don't understand those, you're going to make yourself a lot of trouble. When the government figures that out, you're going to be in a lot of trouble not understand it. And so I, I'm trying to tell you all behind here, behind the woodshed, understand the territory you're walking into. Don't walk into something thinking you, thinking you do know. And if you don't know the Eisenhower document and read it, and it's two volumes, um, Looks like two Bibles. You don't know what you're doing. And so, uh, I, be, yeah, anyway, I don't want anyone to get lost on that. The point is, is that we have things to do. We have a terrain to understand. Uh, it isn't what we make up in our mind. It is what it is. And it, it's going, uh, because we're, uh, we're, we're finding some resistance to it, we feel what we're doing something to stop it. And I'm not so sure, really, that's that's the case. That that's we're making our own mistakes, and we're we're just we're kind of going we're taking the, the, the low hanging fruit, and so I'm asking us to raise the bar for ourselves because I think it's going to be necessary. But uh, one of the things that you what you're up against is uh, this system of illusion that we can condemn. Oh, it's not justice system; it's just us. All that yes, we can say all that, but okay, that's an acknowledgement of the condition. Now, what, what do we do about it, or can we continue to prove it? Can we continue to look at the, how the tactics that they, they use, the admissions that are going on? Uh, again, as I say, the rule of law is a brand of a private association that they call, that you call the bar, they call themselves the bar association that is every one of you. It's all over the world. It is a powerful, powerful private association that's insinuated itself into the system. It wants to declare itself that it's independent. In other words, it's unbiased. And we all laugh at that, those of us that are, know, but it's not funny. And so we have to be able to take, and I say, take these, these things we hear as evidence and store them in an evidence folder if we were going to start building a case, because at some point we're going to have to use this stuff. And it's here to use now. And uh, as I was talking to a friend of mine, he wants to go a certain path. Uh, again, he's, we're finding resistance to justice. There is no justice in the current system. It's resolution the way they want. It. Remember, we read the bar document. And this is not to focus merely on the bar, but here's an evidence in the in the inter- international specter about the condition that's, uh, to me, it's if you looked under wink and nod, this may be the new story in the picture you're going to see uh, in the in the defi- definition of wink and nod. Andrew Brunson, Turkey releases U.S. pastor after two years in prison. The American pastor at the center of a bitter diplomatic rift between the United States, uh, in Washington, D.C., and Ankara, 
is flying back to the United States after a Turkish court ordered his release following two years of detention. And if anybody who was seeing this, following it, you see it was pretty uh, contentious. But here's a, just read the story because the point about it is not the story. It's about how this thing, there's a silent statement being made. We can accept it or not. Well, I say let's accept it. Let's uh, put in a category that this is really what's going on, and we can use it to look around because when you finally come home, when you find out this is international, it's, it's, your, it's also, as I say, the carnival mirror. We're looking overseas in the carnival mirror that's reflecting back on us. We're going to have to know this is happening in us more than just saying, oh, yeah, the system's corrupt. There's how it's corrupt, it's how it's been put in, it's how it's improper that you have to analyze and then start figuring out how to get rid of the problem. And you're not going to do it with a couple people. You're going to have to, it's going to take a bit as far as I can tell. May, not that many, but it's still going to take a concerted effort. Again, the, the, when they don't know how many of you are out there doing and you're hitting them from all different sides, everyone takes a part of the problem. Uh, you, you can, you, you're going to then make an effect that uh, cannot be ignored. Uh, and so the story goes on here. Uh, the surprise release of Brunson, who had been held on terrorism charges related to failed, to the failed 2016 military coup, suggests U.S.-Turkey Turkey relations are thawing, as Ankara seeks U.S. help in investigating the disappearance of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi in Istanbul last week. Now there's a whole other story around this Khashoggi character. Uh, it's fascinating. It all, it all ends up being intertwined in the evidence, and I'm not making any discussion on that. It's still up in the air. There's the plays going on. But anyway, so these are all tied to start to be tied together. And what became more priority and what happens on the international side? And that's not even the point I'm making. Let's get to the point here as we keep going in the, research, in the, in the, study, in the reading here. Brunson was convicted on terrorism charges and sentenced to three years and one and a half months, but the court took time served into account and the remainder of his sentence was suspended. The interim panel, the interim panel of judges, also lifted judicial control provisions, leaving Brunson free to travel outside Turkey. So let's understand, he was convicted of terrorism charges, in a court of law that follows fairly much the, well, they have their own rules, but fairly much the rule of law in order to be part of the democracy that they're imposing upon you. And this, I'm not going to question their sentence or reduced reduction. They could do all that on their own, but it's the problem and the admission that now comes in the next paragraph. And remember, this is the promote the, the judiciary to be independent. I'm going to offer to you, if you look at your state, even in the United States, in your state uh, uh, situation, likely the Bar Association is an agency of the state. Uh, they'll deny it. They'll make equivocations in the paperwork, but they, they, they acknowledge that they're an agency of the state. Now, agencies, again, we go back to our civics lesson. We need to start applying this. It's not so uh, mundane, actually. It starts to be applicable. Uh, my problem with algebra when I was in, in math class in high school wasn't that I did I didn't. I couldn't get it. I didn't have nothing to apply it to. It wasn't interesting. After I got out of high school, I found out how to apply algebra and things like figuring out pitches of roofs and then what the surface area of things are for the purposes of putting t tiles down and all this other and building and construction. How much long will I need my material? I could use algebra real quickly in my head to come up with what I needed to build the the, the things of my life, and that made it that made it important. All of a sudden, I seem to work that way better when I see a purpose. So getting into this, we see we're up to a situation that normally isn't, well, maybe it's, it's not interesting or maybe somewhere else, but it, it, it reflects on what's going on. The bar, Getting back to the bar, so as being an agency, now it becomes important when you look at that's the executive branch as an agency. It's the agent of the government, the government control, or, or the, not the control, it's not supposed to be that way, but, but see how natural that word came out. It's the government function, the execution, uh, you know, the killing of, of the condition of the law. And it's not the legislature or the judiciary. With your bar sits in the executive branch as an agency in a lot of states that I've found. And I don't study it all of it. You can tell me different. And we can find out probably it's the same but in a different way. But at any rate, uh, so we have the bar association as an agency. It's a private-public partnership. It was happening long before we heard about U.N., uh, sustainable development. So this has been in the works for a long time, but point of the agency is the executive branch. Now you tell me how their members, 
who are part and parcel take an oath to uphold that and be part of that agency, how can they be in the legislative and the judicial branch without making a problem with the with the separation of powers condition? Well, if you understand that in 53, for the most part, they supplanted your permanent laws of the people, and they sub- supplanted that in a substitution by a corporate structure, then you realize there are no actual branches. And so this kind of goes down the wayside. And then they're in the seat of decision. So when you question it, you're not going to get the answer. Is another problem you have to look at. Getting to the point of the bar, it's rule of law brand of resolution, not justice. We can see part of that right here. Uh, they're not independent. They cannot be independent of the entire system because they're a part of the corporation. And I'm not going to go down the, I'm not going down the track that states a corporation. It is, but it's, it's got a lot of corporations. I said that's not the problem. It's how is it functioning and by through what or conditions. And so we hear in the next report here, uh, or the next paragraphs here, well, just an interesting statement, if nothing else, you can put no meaning on it, but it says here, his lawyer, Jay Seculo, who is also a member of Trump's legal team, said the ruling was a significant victory from Pastor Brunson and his family. We great, we're grateful to the president, members of Congress, and diplomat leaders, diplomatic leaders who continued to put pressure on Turkey to secure the freedom of Pastor Brunston. Brunson, he said. Now, I don't know about you, but if the judiciary is in the branded rule of law internationally are independent, what pressure could they bring? that the lawyer is grateful to that and not the independent decision of the mercy of the of the Turkey jurisdiction to give uh, time served as credit. I got no problem with what they're doing there in that regard. I'm not going to analyze that. That's up to them. That's their due process. Why is he referencing all the work and pressure put on what is claimed to be independent is the notice to us it's not. And so we can get rid of all of that. And I say that because when you start to focus in on who the culprit is, you have to be able to answer how, take all these evidences to show, even if it's a circumstantial condition, you start piling those up enough, they start to say something. And you have to start delineating that. So for us, it's not just in this, it's in everything. You can't get something proven directly because, there are, it's again, it's very well put together and it's hiding itself. You have to be able to build the probable cause to believe based on other facts that could be admissible. How do you do that? Well, you go by to their rules. You go to the rules of evidence, and you figure out how you're going to do that. This, to me, is a statement of pressure that makes the judiciary non, non, uh, in, not independent. What pressure could they put? This is all politics. And then as we say, that isn't it simple. All politics, that's the United States' problem. It was created as a political jurisdiction. So it's almost a scam on everybody. You know, Republic, if you can keep it, well, it, it, yeah, snidely, they didn't. It's nightly whiplash. They didn't keep it. We didn't keep it. And it resorts to its nature, which is political and commerce. U.S. media reported on Thursday that Brunson's freedom had been negotiated as a part of a secret deal between Ankara and Washington, which would lift like for like sanctions that have been sent, uh, sent the Turkish lira plummeting. Trump denied that any deal had been made. And I posted a thing on Twitter that said that that's, the State Department denied it, but Pompeo said exactly what Trump says after the, the Trump is, uh, is uh, Brunson's relief, released. He, he's, he should be released soon. How'd they both say the very same thing? How'd they know? If the, if the judiciary was important, they would have to say, we'll wait and see. So there's a point here about this uh, brew o law. It's a brand product that they impose on you, uh, that they make you believe it's justice, and it's not. It's resolution. It's how they get through the system of the world. And it works in your uh, right in your town. You know it because you got a court anymore. you got lawyers. you got bar members. You, you watch how they function. You are normally don't find, well, unless you're a winning party, and winning's in quotes here, uh, you're, you realize that there's something wrong. Uh, again, so... Here's evidence, I think, that uh, not with the tongue, uh, wink and a nod. Now this story is the will be the defining is the story you read when you go to the dictionary and see wink and nod or the encyclopedic dictionary. It'll have this case. Wink and nod. There was no 
there was uh, no influence put on an independent judiciary in Turkey. So they can deny, 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 like the lawyers tell you to do, and yet it goes through. Whether or not there's going to be economic uh, uh, cohesion now between the United States and Turkey for certain things, we'll just have to watch and see. But this is part of the game, if you can call it a game. Your life depends on it, and make it literally. So this is the notice to us of how this, this whole thing works. Uh, this is set up to make you believe the experts say when you start looking at what they're doing, it's a complete route of what they, uh, what they ought to be doing. And they, again, in resolution and not justice, they, it's this reflexive law. It's not law, it's just a reflect, reflexive response, and that's all based in policy. And I can direct you to the, the Human Rights Declaration of the UN and show you, go us, and I can't remember, I have to go back and look at this because I keep referring to it, but I need to really read it for you so that no one loses the point. Uh, that you go about three quarters of the way through and you say all those rights are subject to the state. So you, all your all your existence is subject to what is, essentially comes down to today as experts say. Why you see best sciences, best practices, best this, best that, uh, the Internet of Things, the so-called uh, Internet artificial intelligence. They be, this, they, this is an it becomes the experts say, and it becomes absolute. And as long as you stay crickets to the underlying function of it, you allow these uh, public-private partnerships and things like the bar. There, bar associations, there's one of many bar associations and one of many private associations that has the fingers in the, in the, in the people's, in the hooks in the people's back, and they really quite, don't quite figure it out. The ring in your nose the, where they tug on you and you, you, uh, you uh, will resist, and then you resist in the wrong way. And I've tried to explain to a few people that really, really get it, but don't haven't quite worked out how for them, if you're innocent, you're absolutely innocent. There is no hooks. And so what you now have is a trespass. And so this makes a different way you approach what you're, you're doing. It isn't like what I see most people who think they know, know. And then what I say is not an absolute silver bullet, so then there's no really real way to prove it. Because you are, it's like a this con-going movie. It's like you're in the Matrix, literally. The Matrix is not a movie. This is what they'll get you to believe, the spaghetti western. Do you want to go to Disneyland and think you saw a shootout? you want to be a part of it? Uh, this is how they got it worked out. That's, that's your, your, your system at this point. Now, underneath that is all the structures that, that were, are in place, are supposed to be uh, actually functioning, that I see, and I can relate it through the law of the land in the disposal of land, I can see clearly that stuff sits there. That is the protection that everyone speaks they wish they had. It sits right in there. And yet they'll, everyone seems to deny that. And I, again, I, I see this a lot in the in the miners. In fact, and just recently a couple of friends of mine went up uh, on the road. I, I pointed out, I showed where that, ex, I read it to you on the, uh, I read it to you on behind the woodshed. There's an exception there's a, a general, pro, they call it general prohibition against a, a federal agency, a Forest Service authority to make an order to close you out. No one wanted to read it except for the few of my friends. They read it. They just went up. The road closed. They're doing all kinds of, the uh, government's doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, the fires, I think, well, they're keeping going, but they're about, you know, the, we had a rain, they're going out, but uh, they wanted to make a roadblock. That didn't last long when, uh, when the, the people who were going to be blocked out re- realized that the one who was, Admitted they didn't want to, they didn't know the law and didn't want to know, didn't want to know the law. That's, and then you have in your hand, not your opinion of the fact that you have the right, but you have a piece of paper that acknowledges the black and white. That's the objective basis for the fact. And you bring that out. And they don't want to read that. You, you kind of gotten given your own license subject to the next uh, idiot that uh, has a badge and a gun, I suppose, uh, to go to, to actually do what you're, you're, you're supposed to do, and you're not violating law one. What you're doing is not allowing someone to oppress you with their stupidity and ignorance under color, which is a felony. Now, so, and that's a simple, that, right, that, for, that, not a forbearance now because it's a grant, that preclusion against the, any official is, is absolute. The subject, well, subject to their, their criminality, you know, that's just, that's why there's no silver bullet. You don't know if that guy is going to get. Uh, well, in fact, he did. I understand, as I'm told, he tried to get the cops on uh, uh, my friends when they went blew by him after they didn't, the guy didn't want to learn the law, 
And the cops didn't want to have nothing to do with it. So and then I, I get, so I look around and I look in the mining uh, mining issue and the mining miners and they all want to use liaisons and I don't know what the problem with why do you need a liaison when you have the law? Why do you need an intercessor when you have the law? The law is not an issue to be decided. It is what it is. Why do we need a representative to present a position that's a, uh, a representative of, to represent against an issue when there's the law? Why do we need a li liaison? And so the fact that we rely on others, no matter what their experts say status and how many papers they have on the wall, they can show you that they are ethically bound to protect you. It's not the truth because they're not the one that's having to defend their property rights. You are. And so lots of mistakes can happen and you get subject to their condition. You get subject to what they want to do with the information that you gave them. And we're seeing that right now uh, in another mining case. Uh, that's in the, in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, a uh, law firm preferred an inferior response made by what we now know were eco-terrorists looking like attorneys that cared about mining have just filed a paper into the Ninth Circuit as an amicus, and it's totally inadequate. But it was preferred by the same attorneys that have taken a vow to impose sustainable development by way of their membership to the Bar Association. And so this is not unexpected, but this is what we're up against. Now, we have to say, what do we do about that? And we'll see. But this is sitting back and doing nothing because you need to learn more. We've got to read, read, read. I've got to know more. I've got to know how to do that. No, that's not, that's not how this works. You won't be doing what I do. You'll be doing something else, but at least you'll be doing. I only talk to you about what I do because that's, that's all I do. It's what, how my world is referenced. But the techniques, the things that we go through are universal, as I'm trying to point out to you. So there's a, a way to approach this. It's what I call the bag of law. They had the bag of law. The guy didn't want to read it, so he, they blew past him. When they come back, they're all, you know, waving their way out, all that kind of stuff. No cops. That didn't happen uh, last year, but that's uh, it's happening now. And so this is just people in understanding the black and white and imposing it. Imposing it, imposing it, and don't... Don't take no for an answer. You don't get all, you've got to be careful about the guy that uh, thinks he's authorita and has a gun. That's always a danger. Uh, they have their ways. They have what they do. But if you approach it in a more methodical manner, uh, like I say, if you try to educate someone, it's probably better better tact to begin with. And then if they're not going to be, if they're going to be resistant to being educated when they're wrong, uh, then you have a problem and you can decide to do their how you will. Uh, like walk away and then go do what you're going to do and then see what happens. But So the problem is giving it over to authorita to have a say. Like in this case, you have to have this and you have to have that. And then, no, you don't have, we don't have to have any of that. It's right here. We don't have to have any of it. All that is uh, invalid, what you're saying. Uh, and the guy firmly believing that's true is, like a, is a problem in the same regard as I'm going to get here now to the next story about experts say and what we get over to experts. And I told you that so-called AI is given this power and this authority to make determinations outside of you, and more importantly to all this, you implement it. Amazon Patients Alexa Tech to tell if you're sick, depressed, and sell you meds. Now, that on its face would go to Amazon and all this other stuff, and Alexa listening in. You don't think they're listening. Now you're going to give them permission to analyze you and take care of you. Well, let's put this. They're going to have this kind of a device on their shirt, and they're going to be listening and be wired with this new 5G, and they're going to be told in their ear, this robot, this uh, the first, uh, the unandroided robot will be talking to you, uh, and he'll be getting in his ear the answer to uh, to this as well on the wherever you are. This is not. This is just the first notice. Uh, this is uh, of what the tech could do, uh, but they're going to have experts say wherever you go in, on authorita, and they're going to listen to you and make communications, uh, analyze your communications, and here's the first notice that Amazon patents Alexa Tech through that little device to analyze whether you're sick, depressed, and sell you meds, and this is also now coming out in another link I won't have for you, you can go search it, that there's a company that uh, says face recognition can tell you whether you're a terrorist. This is harkening back to ancient, the ancient scholars believing that the character, the way you look and the way you feel and all that, I mean, like literally the bumps on your head was all found to be non-existent, you know, claptrap, but this is coming back. All this nonsense is coming back, and it's going to be the experts. 
And so they listen in and uh, they'll tell you, tell if you're sick, depressed, and need meds. Well, what if they decide that you need the cops? You, you, I mean, what could go wrong here, folks? Echo could analyze your voice to detect, quote, physical and emotional abnormality. Abby normal. You're going to be able to do, put your brain in a, in a, in a jar for themselves and, uh, and you're going to make the uh, Frankenstein movie, I suppose. But uh, Amazon has patented technology that could let Alexa analyze your voice to determine whether you are sick or depressed and sell you b- products based on your physical or uh, emotional condition. Okay, I'm going to end right there. That's the story. You can go read it. I'm going to add the services. They're going to sell you services. And what services? They're going to have a contract with the cops. If this guy sounds mentally deranged. You've got to call us so we can go in and stop him or her. Why? Because we've got a community care policy. Where have you heard that before? Behind which when I told you how important it was becoming. The community care was already in your system. It's a UN condition. It's already in your, in your systems, and it's already being implemented. It'll be automated now through this patent or the whatever comes along from the knowledge that we're giving us right now. Now, this is the same company, Amazon, that's going to dis- declare whether or not you, uh, and they, they, bought, they, pace it, uh, pro- they base this on oh, pro- selling you product. They're, they're going to be doing integrating with selling you services, and it's going to be government services. Uh, and then you understand, and be careful, you start tying all this together, I can go off on this too. When the government gets involved, they're going to come after your property because now you need care. And they're going to get their money somehow. So they're coming after. This is actually a, a sideways glance to get your, your property as well, if you don't understand that. Um, and I've been involved in that when I was in elder care. They're vicious. I was able to hold them off. I was able to reconstruct the condition that I was not aware of it before they started to come in like vampires. And just literally, they figured, they, they destroyed a very good thing for an elder woman that I was taking care of. And here's the point of that was for the property. They found out I didn't have the property. I was just caretaking the whole entire condition. I was caretaking an estate, her estate, her care, another estate. And they found out I didn't have the property. And so they didn't have a way to get at the property uh, through that means. And that, that, that really fl- frustrated them big time. So what they did is they tried to attack me. And anyway, I'm still here. It worked out. You got to understand, I was into what I know now far enough to be able to defend myself against their attacks. It's like uh, dealing with child services. Watch out. Uh, these people are brutal and vicious. But uh, this is what they start to do. You start getting involved. The first thing they want to do is go out and they want to know all the property there was so they can start attaching it for the care they're going to give. And they're destroying a whole system. They were destroying a, a, a whole life. Uh, for the preference of sticking this elder woman into a little bitty room and sa- and moving meds through whatever psycho whatever whatever she needed, and she's totally uh, totally capable on her own. She had a whole lot more life left in her than I felt at the time, trying to keep up with it all. And yet the government came in to uh, we're going to help you. We're here from the government, and so be careful on where this story is telling us it's going to go. Uh, they tell us that they're going to have a patented tech, and then they, you hear from the same company. Uh, that this AI that makes these determines, determinations, they already know and have found out AI, Amazon scrap secret AI recruiting tool that showed bias against women. In other words, for some reason, and I, 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 I this is intriguing to me, but uh, I don't want to get too buried. I got other things I got to do. Why was they tried to take the bias against women out and they couldn't? What's the problem? And so we our our um, our bullet points are that it. It automated, automates bias in a way that can't be taken uh, undone uh, to the point where people looking in said, uh, well, there was only there was going to be a check and balance at some point. Someone's going to see a whole lot of women not being uh, har- uh, v- um, excuse me, uh, hired uh, or maybe other, other groups that the discrimination laws were going to bring them into. into so there was going to be a check and balance in the discrimination laws for, for, for hiring and labor, employment. They found that AI biased itself and could not be fixed. Now let's put that over on your meds. It biases itself and wants to put it, it wants to now control your life and it's the expert. I want you to keep point I want you to understand this will be the best practices problem. This is the UN the if I'll call it the, the sustainable development global control. And who uh, is the one? No not the not the rock group, not the not even the who, not the whole World Health Organization. But who is going whom is going to be deciding this but these bar members that are pushing sustainable development, reflexive responses. They're here to care. We care for you. And they're finding out this technology 
is not so cool. Do you have a Watson or do you have a Norman? Then I pointed to FTO of subsequent to broadcast. It may not matter. And we have the knowledge that there these AI problems come up with their own efficiencies within their own program. They're starting to learn how to reprogram themselves. And they those the people who made them don't understand how that of how that comes to that point. Now I'm telling you at the in the future that's going to be very serious for you when you start to say, wait, wait, I have a we have a real problem and the expert says says, No, that's not the case. We can't find it, but this is how we have to treat you and one of these bar members in a deceited decision says, Yeah, I'm gonna to have to go with the best practices. You're all in a corporation and this is how we best practice you. So Amazon scraps a secret AI recruiting tool because they are biased. Now I want you to consider the application of AI and the Internet of Things and the 5G rollout and all these robots and all this other stuff that's coming on to help our world. And it's not looking too good as we sit here quiet watching it. So it, this AI hacks itself. I mean, this is the other problem. What, where are we going to go uh, with this? And if we go nowhere, don't they don't they win? As our society gets taken over and over and over by these so-called automated robot systems, in a way, I have no problem with that. But look at I told you before when the automated system isn't programmed to protect certain things, it's not liable. Now there's no liability to the company that's making a profit, and they may have killed you or your little one or something that goes on. And I want you to take special notice when they're talking about. Uh, these new automated trucking systems. I told you the intermodal, the multimodal hubs will probably be, um, there be no people in them. But look very carefully. You won't, when they try to show you and promote these new autonomous vehicles and trucks in this new uh, um, communication system, centralized communication systems that controls all these, notice they don't recognize, uh, well, they're, they're, they don't really show you any traffic. They don't show you people. They don't, any other vehicles. They don't show you a lot of that. Be, and I think that's just the, the fact. There's not going to be, you're going to be watching these things going down certain uh, corridors, and uh, there are not going to be people in them. Why? Because it, people are a liability. They use that liability against you in the AI. It needs to have no no people. And then they take the AI, AI, AI and they put it on people with this patent here from Amazon, who they, the company itself, has done research to find out it biases itself. And they couldn't figure that out to the point they scrapped it. So this is, the good, again, the quality of care condition uh, happens as well. Uh, tons and tons of problems, even though I, I my mind is kind of cool. Uh, it's really cool. My Intellectually, I think this is kind of cool stuff. But uh, technology, I mean, what I uh, I um, used to be in the field, if you will, in the, in the electronics, what it could do, what we were doing. We were doing stuff that wasn't even in the world uh, in, in R&D. Great, great stuff. Pretty creative, if you will. But this is not who ends up grabbing these things up. You see the, you see the robots now. They're capable. I think I finally got a, uh, got a scared, folks. I think I finally the last Atlas video kind of got me a scared. That thing can actually. I started thinking. I'm getting to the point. I can't even do that now. Before I was thinking, okay, we can handle these robots. I don't know anymore now. They still got a lot of work yet, but still. I think I'd have a little bit of trouble jumping run, jumping up a three-foot tall block anymore. I mean, just like I was some 18-year-old kid, uh, it ain't going to happen. Now what? And this is what's coming on the world. And it's got AI. And it's, a bi- it's self-biasing in ways that you have to scrap it. And this is the future we want? I don't think so. You know, the, the hashtag going around, stop technocracy. Folks, this is it. Uh, you know, there, then you, oh, and then the hacking problem on top of all that. Who hacks what? Who who controls the algorithm? And who hacks that because they don't have the actual uh, security on the underlying hardware? We're hearing all this stuff, folks. It's just such a such a terrible looking future because of we're not so nice. It's really back to us. We are not so nice. Why all this stuff has to happen? And so we, not only do we have we hack the AI and the AI is hackable of its own. It hacks itself. To come up with with outcomes that not even the people who make the creators like, the system is hackable and hacked and and fallen. Uh, no different than the rule of law is the hack system of its own nature uh, to lie right in front of your face, say they're independent, but they can have pressure put on them. I'd like to know how if they're truly independent. But let's look at that word "in" real quick. 
independent, not as we uh, it's, uh, Solomon would uh, acknowledge uh, to me to help uh, me go through. What word am I looking for? It's non-dependent. Thank you, Solomon, again. I hope you're all right. I really hope I was thinking about your last few weeks. hope everything's uh, fine and dandy. Non-dependent. Uh, independent is inside the dependency. is an inside a system, right? So we can play these word games, but I do it not to play the game more than to say, let's start, let's exercise this a bit and really give it, break ourselves free from all these words and terms is really start looking back at what's going on. But hacking academia, interesting little thing, a uh, little story here. Again, I can't, well, uh, it is what, uh, it is what it is. It is exactly what I've been saying. It's exactly what we see. It's exactly the problem of experts say the peer reviewed nonsense that's out there. Uh, somebody went and tried to figure out how to hack it, and they did. Uh, hackers hacked uh, these journal conditions of supposed experts say on uh, studies and things that we would use that these AIs will be using. Uh, we heard years ago that China was dumping all kinds of uh, journals into the journal, uh, the peer-reviewed journal systems that were completely fraudulent. Well, it was not hard to just make up stories and get them put in. In April, the heirs of 007's nemesis attacked and hacked the Organization of Prohibition of Chemical Weapons in The Hague after OPCW had exposed Moscow's use of chemical weapons in an attempt, attempted assassination. Meanwhile, the Chinese have slipped, uh, slipping tiny microchips into motherboards on servers used by the Pentagon, the CIA, and U.S. Uh, US Navy, and not to mention Apple, Apple, and dozens of other companies. How about Amazon? Maybe that's why that thing was reprogramming itself, you think? How do we know? In other news, Faceplant, otherwise known as Facebook, announced late last week that it had suffered yet another massive hack comprising of accounts of at least 50 million users. In this case, the attackers have yet to be identified. Maybe it was Amazon's AI. Who knows? Maybe it was a Norman. Maybe it was the psychopath that, that, that the IBM programmed. Who knows, folks? This is what's going on. We've at least one thing Snowden did, he's exposed that the Internet of Things is really the hack of, it's Hack City, Hacksville, from a bunch of hacks. And so we can buy into that too. I'll buy it. Remember, buy in is the part of this, is part of the method of getting you uh, under control. Yes, my fellow netizens, parenthetically, or data cows, as you are known to folks who milk you for your personal information, contact lists, and browsing history, cyber war is here, and we are all under attack, even if uh, most of us don't know it yet. Now, what happened was these people, uh, Helen Pluck Rose, James Lindsay, and Peter Boghosian, uh, they wrote, uh, published, had articles published into these journals for, on different stories and different studies that were outlandish and intentionally broken in significant ways. Each contained some little bit of lunacy and depravity. They hacked this system of, of journals and they put all this nonsense in, and they actually got these journals to accept as expert studies for other review and for use into the system that we are handing ourselves over to as best science, which AI and other authorita bureaucrats will be using in your near future. They're probably already using I think they're already using it, and we kind of get that in the... In in a lot of the uh, administrative conditions. Why I say part of the answer to this uh, right now is you, you need to jump into these administrative issues because that's where these things are being used. Completely hack the peer review condition. No controls here, folks. And this is the other thing. It's just uh, on and on and on. What we're walking into and being crickets about silent, we prefer to make pleasant noises but not do anything... Uh, really substantial, substantive. And we hear these concessions coming up from these experts as well, that they're, they're actually doing it wrong, but you, we, don't, we don't respond quite well. We comment to it. We build the evidence that's there. But at some point, we're going to have to make the transition, folks. You take this knowledge, you package it up in a con cogent uh, concept uh, to present, and you doggedly hold that against uh, what the status quo has been. The status quo is an adulteration. And so we have to, that's one of the things that's going on. Like I said, it's, there's not one thing that I'm asking anybody to do. It's a whole bunch of things, which means a whole bunch of you have to start doing what you see. And I have an insight on how to start approaching it. In other words, when, we, when I put in a paper to someone who's asked us to put a paper to explain, let's say, the mining law, and they disregard it in favor of an inferior position by peop, made by people we know are our enemy, I know I'm dealing with the enemy. 
Am I happy that my the work didn't get work or used in any little part? Well, no, I'm not happy. Does it mean I'm not going to write it again? Well, no, I'm still in education mode. But guess what? I have that document now to show and put up against as a as a reflection of how wrong it is on the side that's making the 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 destruction of our way of life. Do I have a power to stop it right now? Uh, no. Is it the the end result is do I last long enough or do I inspire people to pick up the baton before I expire myself? Uh, to carry on and be focused on this thing. That's the only qu that's the only question to me. Otherwise, I really have nothing to tell anybody. I, I, listen, I get not listened to quite a bit. I know lots of people listen, but I mean, I'm talking about functionally. There, there are just so many that don't. It's the gobs and gobs and gobs. I see people with hundreds and millions of people that follow the, them. I got a couple hundred. No one listens. No one wants to listen. Those that do, I, I, can't, I can't be appreciative enough because none of the other ones want to listen. And only a few of those even respond, and then only a few actually start working out how to do. So my view is kind of, a, well, it has no future. But I don't, I don't look at it. I don't fall into that. If I fell into that, I'd, I'd succumb to our nature. See, it's our own nature I'm looking at. And so that shouldn't be a surprise. And so, like I said before, I don't get angry. Yeah, I've been angry. Yes, I, oh, I, you know, I guess I maybe I suffer PTSD on all this battle battle weariness. But you know, it, it just I I put it aside. I keep putting it aside. I focus, focus, focus. I don't know what else to do in a way. But in doing that, we can become. We take the steps it takes in order to combat a thing that's really coming on us that they these people do not care for us. And they'd come in interesting ways that seem to be unaccountable. And so for us, we just kind of recoil in the insanity and don't know what to do with it. We go, we go crickets. We go numb. We go into inaction. And so the counter inaction is to act, become active. To counter a lie is to tell a truth. Hopefully it's the truth. Hopefully you find you get down to where it is. there is the truth for a particular thing. That's why it's easier to do the particular thing. But we have a hacking the system. Hacking AI hacks itself. Hacking the, the peer review. All the best sciences and best practices are all hackable. Our whole life is a hack. I guess maybe that'll be <laughs> the title. Who knows? I forget it when I get to the point. But geoengineering may be used to combat global warming, experts say. Well, what you think, folks? I mean, this is the whole point about this story. They're having to admit something, but they're also denying something. And they're having to admit acknowledgments, I think, is evidence to us in this one article. Geoengineering may be used to combat global warming. Then they give you all the list of all the geoengineering that's been denied up until this point that they do. And then they say all of it's not maybe too good, and maybe only one is acceptable. And we've talked about this on a prior broadcast. And it was the term is afforestation. Go go to places where there is no forest and put a forest. So don't care about the biodiversity in that place. No, force for they call it forcing. We'll force a we'll force based on this theory of carbon dioxide. We'll force a forest on it because we can sequester carbon in a place that's totally not made for it. This is, you know, here we have the insanity. So we can't engage the insanity. We just got to point out what the evidence is. The world may increasingly look to in geoengineering in the wake of the latest UN climate report. Let's see, when I talk about carbon, so I'm not blowing smoke here, folks. They, these are this is a focused attack, and now they're moving. This attack that's on you is being it's shifting right now because they're being found out. Why? Because there are some people out there that are compiling the information and go in and focus that energy back on them in particular ways. And if you're not doing that, they are getting away that with that portion. Those that are going forward and putting it in a focused manner and the narrow path manner are the ones that are helping to push this back. The world may increasingly look to geoengineering. Who are these people to geoengineer, folks? Who are they? And then I, I ask you to go to Title 50 United States, and here, here there you see it in all its glory, and look for the exceptions. To look to, uh, to, uh, look to GNO to wake of the latest UN climate report. What authority is that? But anyway, which, uh, it, which says it could be adopted as temporary remedial measures if the world heads toward dangerous levels. So you have to buy into this whole thing to start with, but I'm going to need to get on because this is the hacking of a system, and you see the hacks are recognizing that they don't have the authority here, that they've got a problem with their models and their systems and their thought that they could use a, a technocracy. they got serious problems about all this. There's great admissions also made in this article. 
not this one uh, point particularly, but I'll read the next paragraph. Uh, the authors of the new 1.5 centigrade study, 1.5 centigrade study by the Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change, say that uh, there is a high de- agreement, high agreement, no proof, uh, nothing really substantial. But we all agree, kind of like toxic debt, isn't it? Isn't that what this is like? We're all in agreement. We're in a conspiracy to defraud. But that's okay. We're in a high agreement called consensus. We'll all get together to agree there's a debt that we can now monetize. And we'll make it toxic debt. Derivatives, folks. The panel of uh, climate change said that there is a high agreement that the injection of millions of tons of sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere could help limit temperature rises to the most ambitious target of the Paris Accord. But, the authors warn there are major uncertainties about the social, environmental, and ecological impacts, which mean that the world would be far better off if policymakers strengthen natural cooling systems such as forest cover and accelerated efforts to reduce carbon emissions. So, folks, those of you that have been pressing this point, you won. It's a 50% win. They're rec- they just told you that they're doing all the geoengineering out there. It's been recognized. And that they could do certain things. But the only safe bet, and still a bet, would be to cause forests to grow. Now, I'm going to tell you on the, on the side here, they can't even let, properly manage the forests they have, and they want to go make special forests. Now, why would they want to do that? Well, because when they make the new special forest and they put lots of time and energy into it, see, they get to claim the carbon tax sequestration credits. This is coming as an environmental service that they're going to charge to you. But at any rate, they're making admissions here that they're, the geoengineering that they're doing, if you buy into the system, will probably and likely not be such a good thing. We need to just make forests. It, it's a big deal here for me if I can convey how big a deal it is to you that you can look around you when you're watching your forest burn. However, their logic is, and they balance the fact that when it burned up, it put all this carbon and soot and all this other stuff in the environment, and it didn't sequester a darn thing would have been better to make houses out of it because that would sequester it for the length of the, ho- the time the house was made and then maybe uh, the materials when it got just demolished was salvaged from that. All that would be sequestered carbon if carbon was the issue. Well, why did they talk about sulfur dioxide? Carbon, uh, sulfur dioxide is a mitigator like carbon dioxide is. They already, NASA already proved that, right? So carbon dioxide is not even the point. So you have to buy into this lie, this hoax, this a relationship to some hypothesis that's unproven to even get here, but they're admitting that geoengineering, all these things, and they have a whole list of these things, of what geoengineering they are doing, and they're saying none of that is actually better than maybe building more, making more forests. And then I'll repeat, I add, they can't even, they can't even, at least in the United States, they can't even manage the forests they have. And yet they'll make up new stuff. Again, fabricate an issue to make an outcome. To do what? To further the agenda. So this is an important report, not to talk about global warming and geoengineering, more than to acknowledge the experts say what they've been saying is no good. It's all a problem. Like Amazon found out, like, uh, well, any of the stuff I've been talking about today. I don't even want to repeat a lot of this. So, Experts say, experts say wrong. And it's all based on agenda stuff, if you notice. It's all based on some private imposition on you to steal your way of life. And I point that out to say, when you identify that, and you identify the method that they use to impose it, you can defeat that. It stops becoming relevant. Until you can get intercept that, then it's going to be a hard, uh, it's going to be a hard road to hoe, I tell you. Like climate, they'll be spraying all kinds of stuff on it because they're still working out how, who's going to make the consensus on this. It's all a big scam. Uh, what's the process of the, this thing that they, uh, underpins uh, climate change and sustainable development? And you got these smart cities and all this other stuff. All this is the implementation, all the technocratic stuff, all the uh, Internet of Things, all this connection, all this AI so-called, the best science, best practices. All this is implemented to do what? It takes a developed nation and reduces it down 
It lowers the bar of that developed nation to the status equal to the whole world's worst, but just above that, just above what they claim is of, 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 of poverty, which is shared prosperity, remember? And so here we have the, may have the first evidence of these things, and I can't help but think back about the cause of the concentration camps, of what really happened there. When I read this, as they bring our nation down and they tap our systems through this black hole funding going right through their budgets that you can find out in the first year of your CAFRs or your consolidated reports, as I'm finding out, is actually spoken of in the uh, the accounting systems. It's not really, it's comprehensive, but we get to, uh, it's comprehensive annual financial report in the government, but it's actually under accounting, it's consolidated report. And it's the consolidation of all the stuff that makes up how the government runs. Well, inside that is these one they only have to best practice the one time they tell you that it's going on. Black hole funding. It's tapping your system. It's tapping your taxpayers. It's tapping your, all the all the money, the so-called money. It's ledgerizing everything off of, of what can be used for you. And then they use this other stuff to, uh, any other thing to uh, services that they're saying. Remember I said it was services, not just products they're going to sell you. They're going to sell services. That all gets paid by the government to Amazon, and they're finding out, uh, they become the expert, but they're finding out that that AI they're going to use is hacking itself, or hackable, or whatever. Uh, flea-borne typhus, as we reach Banana Republic and lower standards in the United States of America, we start, if we haven't understood it before, we like in Flint, Michigan, and lack of infrastructure, lack of care to bring the infrastructure, and the uh, detroitification of places. Uh, here's here's one coming from L.A., uh, flea, well, and this is all sprung as well from the monetization problem that happened in 2008 and the, and the fiscal problem that they invented to collapse the system, to put more, more tax on you, to move the funds away from the ledgers that would, uh, you would be using uh, on top of what the wars do. All this stuff is here eating away at your society. But here's what happens now as they start consolidating people in small places, and here's your pack them and stack them future in smart cities, actually. Uh, but it's here in the third world banana republic. We're seeing the evidence of it. Flea-borne typhus has reached epidemic levels in Los Angeles. Now, I accentuated the word epidemic. And why? Those of you that listen to me, you know exactly why. Why did I do that? It's so important to understand the distinction from what? What's the other word that we use and get put it on? The epidemic is a natural consequence, as I've defined it for you, because pandemic is is the who. Now we are talking about the uh, the World Health Organization, not the rock group, not the owl, but the who, who has made up the pandemic. That's not natural. It's novel, based on novel uh, vectors, novel disease. In other words, GMOs, if you will, or, or modified uh, organisms. But this is not a pandemic. It's epidemic. Now, the argument could be made on the definition. There's not two regions. Well, I don't know. Typhus is in places around the world. So if you go to those two places and you say there's two different regions that have typhus, that would cause a pandemic just by the definition. But that's not how it works. See, So you look at typhus. Can you believe this in America, folks? Typhus, epidemic levels in Los Angeles. This is not man-made. This is the natural consequence of mistreating people. An outbreak of typhus has struck downtown Los Angeles. The outbreak has been blamed on a skyrocketing number of homeless people in the area. Oh, don't blame it on anything else. Just blame it on the effect. See how they do that. But they, according to the Los Angeles County Health Department, 20 cases of the rare flea-borne infectious disease, which is also associated with poor sanitary conditions and overcrowding, have been recorded in Pasadena alone. Uh, over the past two months, health officials now say the outbreak uh, has reached epidemic levels. I could go on and on and read about all this. We, you know, it's interesting, but here we are. We're down into we're seeing the effects of a uh, third world banana republic uh, being foisted upon a nation that was supposed to be uh, prosperous and and uh, creative and uh, vital, if you will, uh, having you know people of uh, working you know backbones, if you will, and all that. It's not, folks. This has been set up. We haven't we haven't spoken against it. So here we are, we're having the effects of, of a de develop. We're now being pushed into a developing country status right here uh, in a natural sense, but by unnatural um, conditions, unnatural conditions foisted upon us. And we continue to sort of allow this. So stack them and pack them, smart cities, this is what it is. This is what they've done. But they had to destroy, remember, evidence of you've got to put a perpetual sustainable debt on people as well. And that may, that debt, that obligation may be to be forced into this condition where you cannot respond. 
Now, how effectual are those people on top of this? How effectual are those people of integrating with their with their societies to help the society to be a part, a functioning part of it, is another part of the problem. It, it's a manifold, it's like dominoes being knocked over here. I'm not saying I have an answer. I'm just saying here's the evidence of an effect from some unseen things that were absolutely seen if you started to lo- know what to look for. And they're okay with it, otherwise they would have handled it, right? Well, look what they go over. They think that there's going to be a terrorist action. They think that, uh, oh, the United States can't stop, is, is, uh, can't let it up. They can't step back because is, is may start up again. Let's forget all the underpinnings that they're making it, but they might start. So we're going to invade another country to stop these little uh, outbreaks uh, in Syria. We'd rather do that than come over here and start the outbreak epidemic of killing our own people. That looks highly suspicious and consistent with the one that we caused when we went over to uh, Germany in the in the World War II, when we we bombed everybody to the smithereens, we stopped their supply lines, we stopped their sub, uh, the the water, we stopped everything, we concentrated the the, con- the so-called concentration camps. That look to be a little different when you start looking at what they actually might have been doing. Uh, you concentrated a bunch of people without supplies, and you created the same thing that's going on in uh, in L.A. And we see people die left and right now. Seems the same reflection to me, and what's all caused by what what the allies did. So, I don't know what you know what people are going to do. We're going to we're watching the the tail here develop. You say, well, I don't live in L.A. It don't matter. Well, okay, you don't live in L.A. You don't live in the condition quite yet. But if you listen very carefully over the last 20 years, they've told you this thing coming on that we can identify. If you go listen to the FCC uh, guy uh, at the time, I don't know if he's still there. He told you this this is going everywhere, this, this technology that they're putting in this, this communication system for all this artificial imposition of technocracy, of the Internet of Things, of the controls, of the best sciences, of the only science will be the experts say, which are hackable and hacked, and going to be, and that's the plan. So we can continue to uh, to listen to the experts say, or we start looking at nature itself and our nature and start to uh, su- suppress what harms ourselves, us, and then exalt what in us what we can advance. Now, I don't know what each one of you will use it to drive that. I, I I think about what I do. I don't even know what I why I do what I do because, in some regard, I I don't see. There's nothing for me in it actually, and there's nothing that I'm leaving for anybody except for y'all, I suppose. It's just something inside I feel it, it needs to be done. And so I don't have a, an answer even for you all that to, what inspires you, what, do you what, would I, what can you use? I don't know. That's up to you. You have to feel that this is important enough to start doing something about. And I think I think there's a methods methodologies worked out uh, that we already know uh, against the one that's being placed against us to to stop it. And it's it is a slow process to the gearing up. It's like any like it's like physics. A car, a truck takes a while to gain momentum. It, it all depends on the load you're carrying and how where you, and the try and, and the road you're traversing about how fast that's going to happen. And if you only got one cylinder pulling a, a a big truck, it might take a while. Uh, you get a you know big motor, you know more cylinders, bigger motor, more power, more capacity. Maybe you go a lot faster. And that's kind of the society as I see it right now. We just need right now. You got one or two. Uh, you got a lawnmower motor running right now to uh, in people. The amount of people that equate to a lawnmower motor trying to run a semi down the highway. Well, we can get it to roll, but it ain't going to go fast. And yet we could we could bring people to the to bear, and we could be, develop uh, systems that would be more like you know a jet engine running the running the thing, and really be going down the, the road. I mean, almost maybe too fast for ourselves, you know. But that is that a real a really a bad thing? Or maybe maybe not. We're not there to find out. But we're not doing that. We're not even coming close. But we're a lawnmower motor trying to trying to drive a semi right now, societally in our response to all this stuff. So where flea uh, nature can be pretty deadly, flea-borne typhus and all this going on, uh, another study pops out which is more interesting to me, uh, and it, and it is a, of an interest to me. I was wanting to grow mushrooms a long, long time ago before they became more popular to get them in the marketplace. I thought it would be kind of neat to do grow new mushrooms. A uh, study finds that magic mushrooms, this is, okay, and this is also a critique as I read that, of again this website, uh, I, uh, Free Thought Project. I I wish they would be sometimes less 
uh, sensational or directed in what they think and more to the facts of the case. Uh, study finds that magic mushrooms help honeybees fight off dangerous viruses that are killing them off. Okay, pretty neat, huh? Mushrooms. They put in magic mushrooms, and I went through the story. I had to go through it twice. I guess that's uh, I had to waste some time because I couldn't find it. They, they don't say it's magic mushrooms in the story the way they describe it. When you go read the term of what the mushroom is, it's really just a generality of a mushroom. Uh, there's a certain mushroom, certainly, but the, it wasn't trying to promote the magic mushroom because that seems to be now what they're trying to do. They're trying to say magic mushrooms solve all these psychological problems and they're a big deal, and that seems to be more like a psyop. No, I'm not saying it doesn't do all that. What I'm saying is that the promotion becomes a problem. It should be a natural thing that's going on. And I see people, why are you pushing all that when you've got other bigger deals? That once you push the bigger deals, this other stuff falls away. It's already going to come part of the, like I said before, if you understood before that your production comes from the land grant, you don't need to legalize pot. You don't need to decriminalize. You've got nothing. It's got nothing. It's part of your right. Why didn't you focus on that? When you did, you got rid of anything. You got rid of having to worry about any of this stuff when it's private to you on your land. But no, we, we think in other ways. So anyway, here, fascinating. And this happens to come out of a guy named Paul Stamets' work, a very uh, influential guy in, uh, in mycelium studies and things. Uh, some of this I'm wondering a little bit. He's a lot more um, sustainable than I would like to be in the world. He takes a lot more uh, stringent position and almost to the point that says that people are really a problem, uh, though I'm not gonna, I don't want to put words in his mouth. He pushes the, uh, the, the environmental view uh, really hard and at some point it's, I'm a little uncomfortable with that part not that I don't agree with the environment and watching out but at some point we have to do things in the world and I sometimes wonder whether or not that's a priority at all on the other hand we are destroying things that are fascinating that we really need to know before we destroy I'm, I'm totally agreeable with that that thing uh, so again we have that what they call the balance but uh, here it is a interesting uh, interesting dynamic I have never noticed this before, so I think this has to do with the fact that people were in a position, because they work on the mycelium, they had a, some mycelium, and they use it all the time in a vegetable garden, that they would find bees going to some uh, mycelium, some of that white fungusy stuff you find in the dirt. Uh, he uses that stuff to grow plants better. It's, it's a colony in the dirt. It's a healthy soil, and that's part of it, not just that you have, you know, your your some vitamins and some uh, proper mix and sand. That's that's the reductive thing. But no, there's a whole environment, whole life inside the soil. And when you make that healthy, things just go better with it, right? So that's what Paul Stamets has found, and that's what he does. And he sells this stuff. But now he's got, he's just, I guess, he considered himself. A, I guess he's considered a scientist to be able to make these studies. And he finds out in observation, not models, but observation of nature. That bees were going to mushrooms, and they went, why? There's no you look at a mushroom. There's no pollen that way. There's spores, but there's no real. So what were they doing? The theory was they're actually going to those mushrooms to get something from them to help them. And sure enough, in the study, and again, fascinating how they come around to this, they find out that extracts of polypore mushroom mycelia reduces viruses in honeybees. Researchers were looking into a way to combat the highly infectious viruses that were wiping out global honeybee populations, and they started looking at the mushrooms uh, when they noticed bees were seeking out the fungus. Now, I've seen bugs go on the ground, and you look at the ground, there's nothing there. Well, maybe it's some moisture. I don't know what they're bugs after. Well, this might be part of it, folks. The mycelia sits right at the surface. The, the bulk of it you can't see, but there might be mycelia that's bringing up something that these insects, all the insects, not just the bees, are using. So mushrooms are our friends here, not just the magic ones. Now, some will kill you, and this is just a fact of nature. Not everything natural is good, okay? So let's get beyond that. Let's not get wrapped up in that. But uh, let's identify the terrain and realize there's limitations, and we have to live with that in that. I mean, you're not, uh, again, you, we have limitations. There's a natural limitation. We're not sovereign. Okay? So let's cut that out right there, too. Let's learn to live with what the nature and the wonder is. So bees apparently, by the study, go to find a food, uh, uh, another plant, that helps to aid them in disease. A study found that extracts of amadou and reishi fungus reduced the levels of honeybee-deformed winged virus 
and Lake Sinai virus with colonies that were fed Ganderma, Ganoderma resinaceum extract showing a, quote, 79-fold reduction in deformed wing virus, or DWV, and a 45,000-fold reduction in uh, Lake Sinai virus, LSV, compared to col control colonies, close quote, which brought researchers to the conclusion that, quote, honeybees may gain health benefits from fungi and their antimicrobial compounds. And again, this is uh, by Paul Stamets, and you might want to look him up. Uh, vast, vast um, uh, appreciate what Paul has done all his life in this area. This is really kind of a neat thing. Uh, not just that it was interest of me. I think he's really a, a brought out something. Uh, and so I think that the, the source of this is not a hacked source. Somebody who has dedicated his life to observation and implementation, and he has products, and he tries to make the uh, what he sees in the world better. And so this is one thing he's done. Right? I talked about it in another sense about what we got to do against the system of things. Now, this is in the nature of things. And I think if you meld what he does with what a farmer might want to do, not just the product side, but understanding the nature, the, the rancher and the farmer understand that nature better, way better than the ecologist that says it, that will promote, or the agency that promotes they're protecting it. Because when you look at the underlying uh, fact of it, they're not protecting that at all. As I pointed out, go read the Biodiversity Treaty. When you find the GMO section, I hope you, uh, I will, uh, will you laugh when you realize you're scratching your head? Why is the uh, GMOs in the Biodiversity Treaty that's promoted by the sustainable development crowd? Is why a big oil supports uh, carbon, carbon, um, uh, carbon tax. <laughs> the bottom line, folks. Here's interesting. I just really appreciated the study. Uh, interesting how we find out what's in the stomachs of a bee or in a virus or all that cool stuff. Uh, but vi but mushrooms may be our friends in d other ways. Again, this is just another, for me, it's from the herbological sense, it's just things uh, nature provides that may be available to us. Now, you see there was an extract as a concentration process that they had to do this. So it's not just the eating a bunch of mushrooms that does this, although I'm sure there's a little bit of that. There's a proper application. Again, can't do nothing. You have to do something. And so this is not hacking the system. This is starting to observe the system, the natural system, and finding out what about it works, what it doesn't. Taking the simplest little thing is why that, that bee keeps going over to that thing, and that thing doesn't have pollen. Why is that? Is all for you all. This is us. When I came up in, in through high school or at school and in high school, that was what sci that's why science just intrigued me. It was, it was a test for me to look at nature. Was I observant enough? And I always forever think I'm not, but I, you know, you see what you see, but I, you always, I'm always in, admir in admiration of people that look at nature and see something different right in front of when you didn't see a thing. And then you, then you had the fortitude and the pers per persistence to, to ask the question and go find the answer. Not the outcome, but come up with at least a, a, an educated guess. Again, they had a conclusion in this. They concluded, I'm not so sure about that either, but there's a cause and effect between the observation to what they ended up doing with it, right? So there's, that's how our science works. We're gonna, our best guess works all the time this way. We're going to say that's good enough, and it could very well be. That system's not hackable. You're going to only destroy that system. You're not going to hack it. And if you try to hack it, you're going to cause a different problem. And this is what people, I don't say people generally that listen uh, for information, I'm talking about the people that are like climate change people, uh, the inventors of the concept, not the uh, not the fact of it, the consensus types, the uh, let's create a problem, uh, uh, let's observe a problem so we can create an, an illusion. It's just a just somebody looking for make work, as far as I can tell. It's not this kind of work. Well, you take the system you existed. We're so uh, lack of knowledge of our own environment is fascinating to me. And still, all my life, we're still not still finding this out instead of knowing it. See. And so this is a, a, a this is how you work with the system. You don't work against the system. You don't and when you work with the system. This is one thing I will appreciate about Paul Stavis because he's working with the system. He's more sensitive to how that system is 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 interfered with to the point it starts to interfere with and impact it in a way that makes it not good. And it doesn't take a lot sometimes. And I, I have to appreciate it because that's a truth. Whether we like it about it, how we may stomp all over the world and do what we do. We may do it maybe less than um, empathetically, as we should really be paying attention. Our lives went too quick. 
We we are now to the point where we look at our phones, but we could care about the, the daisies growing up in the cracks of the sidewalk. We're going to have a green line to walk, and it's going to have our social credit machine on it that we're going to look for the next digit because we walked in the right direction toward the uh, the, the political centers, and and we gave the high five and the Heil Hitler, or whatever the finger up, whatever finger down, whatever the heck you have to do. And I'm going to get another tenth of a of a of a of a token. That's our life. We forget to look around, too. And yet, anyway, uh, you know where that goes. So we make uh, not being in the nature, not being into uh, understanding it better, um, not being, well, really the observers of our own environment that we really don't understand. We're here, but we don't understand it. We think we do. Not being so arrogant to think that we do either. And we'll take our conclusions in a, in a really, in a, in a stepping back matter. We don't do it that way. We just impose ourselves. And this is the wrong side of us. Again, we try to do things that harm things. We come up with these things like the 5G networks, and we do the research, for those of you that are into this, I'm going to keep talking about these as we go, because in a way it's uh, important, because this is the system they're bringing on. They promise that it's coming. It's guaranteed it's showing up. I've told you the 5G system is only for two things. One is for automatic cars, automated cars. Probably why we talked about that highway that they cut the trees back. That's probably what that was now that I think about it. I, not now, but uh, a few weeks ago I came to conclude, oh, that's what the trees would probably drop. They're going to probably make a corridor right there for cars and trucks. Not tomorrow, coming up. And so 5G uses the same EMF, we find. Uh, EMF waves, it's Pentagon crowd control systems. That uh, shouldn't come as any surprise. It's not. It's the same frequency. It's the same frequency to do it. It's like your microwave systems. It's not even... Uh, ex- nothing even out of the ordinary, but they're fo- they use it as a tool for harm. We're finding out these frequencies can also affect the bees. So when they come up with a, when they, when people come up with a conclusion that the mushrooms helping these viruses, uh, did they, the control, was the control uh, out of any known effects of 5G has to now be, I'm not going to condemn what they did, but we have to start looking at the potential of that now as well. Maybe there is no way to control. And so we're blinding ourselves. And I, as I say that, that's what the problem with climate change really is, as, a, as this hypothesis modeling. It's blinding us to actually looking at the real, the real nature of things, is what I think. I think we're being blinded by all this stuff, and we're not going to look at what we need to do. That's why we don't know what geoengineering does. We don't know the system. And science is done. It's done right now. There's no I- I- impetus to go out and really observe. We'd rather tell you what the model is. This is how it works, without any knowledge. And that hides what we need to know underneath authorita. If we don't say it, it don't exist. And then a bunch of people who would study it don't go study it. And so we're being blinded, I think, and I think that impacts more than what, what we'll appreciate maybe for a while. But that's, my, that's conjecture on my part. I don't know how you can be told to lie and it quells your action to go find the uh, actual truth how that's not going to impact you adversely. So now we find out that the, we heard a story before that these frequencies are affecting bees. I'm moving over to the 5G, this 5G ro- global rollout, though, they say. It's, this is not an inconsequential idea here. Sustainable development is global. It's global governance. It's on, a, it's on a scale and a level, I think, beyond appreciation for a lot of people. They can talk about it, we can complain about it, but we don't understand how it's being brought in. I bring you the method. Like I said, we sued it in 2013. I, I know exactly what it looks like. I know exactly how they do it. And we have the tools and we have the understanding to start to subvert it. And not just subvert it, we destroy it. It, it has no air. It dies like anything. It has no light, no air, no food. We, we kill it. This method gets killed. And if you don't learn that, you're, not, you're, not, you're going to be run, rolled over by it. The rollout's going to roll over you. So they use the same technology in this that the military uses in their in their devices. Uh, and that's not the end of it. It's even more than that. The thing about it, it, it's not even the technology at some level. I'm not too worried about like 5G for little systems. It's it's, it's going to be pervasive, and then it's at levels that can do damage. Even though the traditional review of the damage is is agreed to. Other damages are not are yet to be put in because none of you all are stepping up to impose that and get it to be noticed uh, in the proper way or at all. And I'm asking you to, if you're involved with the 5G, 
you're, it's hurting the bees. If you've cared of the bees, you've got to fight the 5G. You've got to stop, learn how to fight the 5G. It's going to roll out. I don't see how they're going to stop it at this point. Does that mean we give up? Well, no, it, it, no, you can stop anything. It's, again, this is the thing. I want to talk about a living constitution. Everything's what you, they, they came onto this stuff and it wasn't, they brought this stuff onto you. Well, you can bring it back out. It just takes your energy to do so. It takes you the prioritization of it. And so the lack of integration with the process that there is and just saying, oh, they'll just let it do what it does and just complain about it, that, that's not going to work. But that's not going to happen. That seems to be kind of innocuous. Cancer I can live with over 10 years. Who cares? I won't be here. Right? That's what our attitude is. I don't, I don't care that my little ones get tumors and can't have kids or the kids come out with two heads. I don't care about all that. I don't care their life is diminished because they can't think because all of a sudden all this technology is coming in. And as I've been telling you, and another report came out that creates beat frequencies. Actually, the CIA report that came out back in 1983. That was fascinating when I saw the data of that. Because that's the time right before that, two years before that, I'm finding out about these, uh, this interaction in the in in the substance of your brain uh, between multiple frequencies, and that they could create all this stuff that uh, they could create what they call the beat frequencies or summation or different frequencies to actually control what appeared to me to be they could give you holographic uh, impressions if they stimulated the right places. Well, then two years later, the CIA comes out. We now see a report. They're talking about that. That actually has a name for it. Now I found out. And this is what all this technology starts to do. So your little ones, I may not get cancer. They might not get cancer until they're 50, but they get cancer. Who cares? They'll have a, a big life of 50. They'll become elder at 46. Remember, it doesn't matter. Uh, but who knows? They, they can't think all that time. They're not. They're diminished people. So now they're diminished. So we've got to enhance them. We're going to do it with this little chip that's hacked by China. And who else? Who knows how else? And then progress. And, and then now we need the 5G just to keep our societies together. It's a national security issue now. If you can see how this starts to roll out globally. Why it's not so far-fetched to look over in the Middle East to see the techniques that are being used and say, no, they're doing that here. If you don't see it here, if you see it there, they're doing it here. You just can't see it. It's transparent to you. The transformation is transparent to you. And there's mechanisms that are put in place to legitimize it through the due process thing and, the all, and all this stuff that they're, they're supposed to do where I talk about the Administrative Procedures Act. That we hear a problem now, you know, the more quick way to take you out, not with cancer, which can come pretty quick, as some of you may uh, have experienced or heard of people. They get like what pancreatic cancer will take you out really quickly. Uh, and I understand there's a couple things you can do for it, but notwithstanding, that's not, not what people do. The... The more important problem becomes, like, you look at your hierarchy of need, uh, air is a, is a big one, uh, and then you have water, and then you have food in this, you know, this dynamic of reality. Uh, well, we find out, again, in the manufacturing process, in the bottom line, in the making of bottom line, that sometimes people are, are a little less than scrupulous. And this is where I'm going to offend a couple people, but I have to say this only in the context of, of who we are. We're, we're not good to ourselves. We're, we, we don't mean well amongst ourselves. And sometimes we need an intercessor, if you will, someone that can buffer the problem. Uh, and this next problem is not something you say, well, let's let the market handle it. Because you would be the market, and if this problem helps you, you're not in the market pretty quickly. You're dead. That There has to be this, again, a balance on how we address the, 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 the drive for, for, for exceptionalism in, in in, run, in run, looking for a profit and shareholder uh, interests and all that stuff versus what they actually do to us because we're the ones that are going to are the targets of all this uh, comes out in another administrative problem which I, I find this interesting that's coming out now uh, again in people looking and finding and all this stuff and the things they do to find it and we're finding out the problems a little bit after the fact but maybe not so much to give you the knowledge here Impossible Foods is a company Impossible Foods is quote misleading consumers, close quote, misleading consumers about its GMO protein, FDA rejects the claim it is safe for consumption. Is a monstrous story here for me relative to the APA, what the, what the FDA is looking at, how they're addressing it, why, what the analysis was on what appeared to be a proof that it, this product, this protein was safe, and in fact it wasn't. Needed to have someone check it. Because where the Impossible Foods wasn't given the right to put their burger, their soy leguma, legumoglobulin, I'll, I'll get it right, 
In fact, I'm going to slow up and I'm going to get it right. Soy leg hemoglobin protein is not the same and not so safe. Why? When they put it on the market without the permit to do so, people started going to the hospital. It ends up this protein can be conceived, if you will. It's like a peanut allergy. It's like any dairy allergy. It's like an allergy to sesame seeds, right? And so what the what the company was promoting, like Monsatan might, or any of the other agricultural companies, well, it's it's safe, regarded as safe. It's like nature. It's not nature. And the, and this is important from the standpoint the FDA caught this. And part of the problem was people were getting sick. Before the company had right to actually put it on, they were fabricating this technology, they were putting it together, they claimed it's safe and it's not. To me, that's like everything else that we're having to argue with. But here's an, here's an example of how, what it took, and in this case it wasn't that hard, to come to the conclusion that Impossible Foods was misleading consumers. Remember, they don't even have permit, and you already got consumers. And they harmed people. How these people that got harmed don't own that company, I don't know yet. But that's not for me here now. What I'm trying to point out is that here is people doggedly get on in this thing and absolutely looking at it with an objective basis, and the FDA finding that they hadn't actually proven their secret sauce of how this puts together was actually safe. And then it helped that people started getting sick. For you 5G, your smart meter, for you GMO, whatever, other GMO to vaccines, all this other, this is evidence of the harms that you bring in and you say, listen, these harms are happening whether or not you have a test for it. You're going to have to, as I've told you, you need to challenge, you need to have uh, create the test that outs it to figure it out. Don't let it pass because it's not safe. Notwithstanding, your tests are inadequate. You prove why and how. One of the chief selling points of the Impossible Burger, a much ballyhooed plant-based burger patty, is its resemblance to meat right down to the taste and beef-like blood. The qualities from an ingredient produced by a genetically engineered yeast have made the burger a darling among high-end restaurants like Momofuku, Nishi, and New York, and a Gardiner in San Francisco, and have attracted more than $250 million in investment from the company behind it, Impossible Foods. Now, its secret sauce, soy leghemoglobin, a substance found in nature in the roots of soybean plants that the company makes in the laboratory, has raised regulatory questions. Impossible Foods wants the Food and Drug Administration to confirm the ingredient is safe to eat, but the agency has expressed concern that it has never been consumed by humans and may be an allergen. Uh, it goes on to documents, and that's enough to read. Uh, again, I could keep reading and reading. It's not the point. The point is, is through FOIA, you got documents that show that there was a problem within the FDA that I'm saying you could have instituted against and not left it to the FDA. But there are the, as you see, the agency that could be used to keep people from being harmed. Now, sometimes regulations may not be enough, and I've got a couple stories here. That, again, the responsibility is on you. But here's a company that promoted, and it's fascinating to read their documents to see how they kind of skirt around how they do this. It's an analysis of how, how, you, get, how you get confused and, and con, uh, are um, confounded to buy in and allow these things to happen in all the other ways they do it. And whether it's climate change or pharmaceuticals, vaccines, all this stuff. You just watch how these attorneys do this. Now, I guess I'm back to the attorneys. But anyway, this is their, their, that's their job, to torn things to promote the, their clients' needs, right? And that ends up being with this, within the FDA and the companies, but the bottom line, correct? $250 million worth so far on something that they tried to pass as safe, and it's not. It's a natural occurring substance, but it's not known to be safe. In fact, it hurts you. And peanuts are natural. I understand now people people die around eating those peanuts. So, and we get another thing here, not just peanuts, it, it's also other things. And so if you don't understand the importance of having a, a check on these things, even natural things can be harmful. So having a natural thing on a label isn't necessarily going to help us. And so this is where the, you get companies that want to hide this fact, 
uh, that's what the regulation authority is. So for those of you that say there's no, you know, no states needed, that's true. I guess there is no state needed, but we got companies that are going to make products that'll make you sick, and you may not survive. You may be eating the wrong. Talk about a magic mushroom, a death cap. How's that? Oh well, it it had this substance in it. It was supposed to be good for you, and then you respond to it by dead. You're dead, gone. You didn't have a chance to stop it because you were told something and you agreed, you accepted the representation as this one did to show how even the regulations are, are problematic. Uh, that people do things for whatever reason and things happen. It's still, still your responsibility. Uh, Pret A. Manger says a second customer died in allergic reaction. What? Oh yeah, the second one. Because that same restaurant... Someone else died the first time. From what? A representation of something in the food that wasn't supposed to be there. So I guess I'm hitting a little bit here. What's natural may not be safe. And what's natural may not be maybe made unsafe. Uh, and we need, uh, I don't know about we need, but we for people who are going to buy and sell and understand, they need to have some measure. You want to get rid of the FDA? You're going to have to find some buffer between the need, the the want of of going for profit and don't care on the hurting some people, to to not have that control for you at all. But here we have a two people where in the product was represented there wasn't something natural killed it. Sesame seeds was the uh, the the uh, first death of a 15 year old girl. Now th- th- does she get the chance to go fight that company for hurting her? No, she's dead. Her family, her her father gets to do it. But she's dead. So regulations about what uh, what we have in the food system because of the vastness of it, and we don't go outside and pick from trees anymore, uh, becomes a problem in reality. And so you can have stuff that, that you represented to you that's supposed to be good. Well, it can kill you. And here's two, two in one restaurant. They got Another one was... Um, I think uh, dairy, there's supposed to be no dairy, dairy products in the flatbread. It was supposed to have, like, coconut milk in it. Well, it was misrepresented that there was no dairy product in it. The, the woman died. And this, I look at this, the Impossible Burger. I look at this and anything else that's regulated uh, that does cause harm. And then we got Title 50 to c- concern ourselves with as the back, really the last line of, uh, of, of observation for how do we deal with that. So we have these reports here uh, that some of the stuff we see in reality of regulation has a purpose, and it, it's, it, it has a, a buffering ability to keep us from being dead before we have the ability to make the decision. And so in a way, I guess, getting around about, I hear lots of so-called scientists saying, well, you, you don't need, you shouldn't need to uh, put stuff on labels when it's GMO. Well, folks, and wait, if it's coming down, if I need a 50-foot-long piece of paper to explain to me what's in that so I can see what's in it, so it don't kill me, I think I need to know that. And so, I, you know, I'm not into that. I wouldn't want to see that. But the point is, is that what's natural may not be safe, and what's on the label may not be helpful. And this, again, falls on us. And then we hand that question, if it's an issue then, to someone else, that bar member, what's the outcome of that? We'll be dependent on, on what the bottom line is at some level. And they have a whole list of ways that they can justify it. And some of it's right. I mean, I can't condemn. When you have a certain standard, you wouldn't want to be convicted of a crime without the element being proved. I get that. And so that's what that judge is supposed to do. You have a standard that you're supposed to perform or omit to, per, uh, you know, in, a, in an act of omission. If you violate that, you have a standard that you're held to. That's all the law was supposed to be when you harm somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about just the harm, right? Well, they've brought it into con- into a into a uh, they brought the people into a status of harm when they violate the statute as a corporation, and now you've come into liability that way. So that's why you have so-called victimless crime. But let's move over to where there's harm. You have an objective basis. It's called the the law uh, of how the elements are that constitute that violation. You turn over your case uh, if you're if you're alive to to a judge, and they can decide. They did now give it over to decide. That's what the issue is of the court given over and the society of the court you invoked in order that wouldn't be there either for the remedy that killed your little one, given you choose to do that even. So you, you uh, 
turn your stuff over to a judge by putting in a court case. And it goes through, we have a Monsatan case, the recent Monsatan case, where uh, they got this big old $289 million judgment in damages uh, for the groundskeeper. And the judge came in on appeal and said, the groundskeeper, now, look at the burdens here. The groundskeeper failed. He was a plaintiff. His attorneys, the groundskeeper failed to show Monsatan acted with malice in landmark case. And so, again, just by the title, when I'm telling you about looking at the elements of what you think happened to you, you have to find that in the objective basis. These are requirements to prove that someone did something to you. And there's, you can read back about why they're there. And they make a lot of, so a lot of these things do make sense, notwithstanding the people that are interfering with the uh, actual function. They have to make it look good, and they can do it by this way. But that's, so when they do it right within the construct, it's okay. Within, the, within the, the objective basis that we live by, I don't have a problem with that. It's when they work on it outside of that, and then they deny it. Again, the color of law felony. But groundskeeper failed to show on Satan acted with malice. That's pretty serious. How did they fail? Well, you can go look at how you do it. You can see how you fail. If you're going to bring something forward, if malice is an element and you don't bring the evidence, not what your opinion, but the evidence that constitutes that element, you will fail. It's the same thing that happens in the administrative procedure side. When they have a phrase, a standard that you have to meet, your opinion doesn't matter. It's what do you prove relative to that definition. That's the objective basis that everyone is making, is conforming to. And the history of that is relevant. You can't, dis, you can't dis, disconnect from it like I hear a lot of people trying to do. They make it up. You don't have to. So a California judge opened the door Wednesday to, to a do-over of a landmark trial that awarded a California groundskeeper, Dwayne Johnson, $289 million in damages from the agrochemical giant Monsatan after he claimed constant use of the company's Roundup weed killer caused his cancer. So guess what? What is the thing that's held out that didn't get reduced? It was the compensatory damages? Well, I can't say it didn't get reduced. What still stands in the judge in the award was the compensatory damages, but the judge reduced that a bit. And there's no discussion. I didn't find a discussion on why, but that got a little bit dis, the, in, in appeal. That got reduced a little bit, but the punitive damages, that big. Big dollar one, to, the punitive to, to impress upon the actor, the criminal, the, the, the violator, the wrongdoer, that not to do that again. That, that $250 or $80 million has been stricken because it, punitive is based on the element of malice. And so here's just an object lesson on how you go, you, how you can fail, and how an attorney here failed to make sure when they wrote up the complaint and the evidence they produced by all the witnesses did not, in this judge's review, prove the element required for the punitive damages. It's what I tell you, looking at, when I say find out what the elements of what you're going to do are, you don't make those up. You go find out what they are. You dock, you list them. I go list them. One, two, three, four, whatever they are. Like in RICO, it could be up to 13 elements. You list them on a line, and you make sure when you write your complaint, you address each one of those elements, and you ex anticipate that you're going to prove each one of those elements. Because if you get all done, and someone reviews it, and it was the oversight of the trial court, it was oversight of the attorneys, it was oversight of the, more importantly, the people, the guy, Dwayne, uh, who had the charge of his own case, it was against the, even the attorneys, well, the attorneys from Monsatan uh, ar argued um, may have argued that. I don't know. I can't. I didn't read close enough to see who came up with the failure of the malice. Uh, but it, the jury missed it, everything else. Everybody missed it except for this, this judge. If this is the case, and I'm going to just go with it, that the element, one of the elements required for punitive compensation is missing. Cannot go against Monsatan. And so we see a reason why somehow we got these rules set up so that no one's taken advantage of for as much as I said Monsatan. I mean, how much can I love this company when I give it that name. And Slayer now owns Bay, uh, uh, Slayer now owns Monsatan. So you put it together, folks. I've got no no love in my heart for these people, but come on now. We've got an objective basis to be fo following. So uh, word to the wise when you're working up something, and this is administrative as well, go look at what they're asking and make sure you meet that with more than an opinion. 
more than and go to the rules of evidence to find out what's more than circumstantial. And there may be a couple steps in there too. But so here you got you can have your 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 and I don't know where this is going to go. This is just the interim of this question at this point. Uh, they've now lost the, the 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 incentive to not do it again. Notwithstanding that Monsanto doesn't exist, and Slayer now will take over and do what they're going to do, under different names and different things. Now. The system, again, looking at nature, the natural response, and things like that, and the bottom line is handled by the agencies and the, and the, and the commerce side. Uh, there's natural things, like we said, the bees have a response to its own nature uh, that help it uh, live, and the viruses are killed by some substance in the mycelium, a mushroom, pre, a pre-fruited mushroom, or maybe the fruited mushroom, uh, the, the mushroom you see. Uh, the, there's things in nature apparently are around us, and the, the nature provides for us if we understand it better. We can use. We don't need the artificial thing. We don't need maybe to use the Monsatan products if we were a little more knowledgeable. If maybe those bees, we understood the mycelium was important, and we had the ground prepared that it was more healthy. Maybe the plants and the bees wouldn't need the Monsatan. But see, we don't we don't go that far. We want the quick the quick fix. Not everybody, but enough. Enough, enough to cause a problem. But based in guys, you know, Dwayne's cancer, what caused him to, he's near death, I suppose. He, he survived his first case. I don't know if he's going to survive the appeals on a product that they're putting on uh, that was supposed to be deemed safe and now found out. It is not. See, the compensatory didn't say it didn't happen. The jury, he, he now has a $35 million, reduced by $4 million, $35 million conviction against the safe use of Monsatan's Roundup product. So don't miss the fact that we didn't get the compensatory, the big bucks. It was still a guilty, if you will, for the harm that he, that was caused to a man, causing cancer. And then we've gone on over to that. Maybe the guy could have helped himself, and I hope this never pops up. But you didn't mitigate the problem once he had it. When you see this answer, if this is an answer for you, oncologists don't like baking soda cancer treatment because it's too effective and too cheap. And so, again, we looking at this again, and not to diminish Dwayne uh, Johnson's uh, harm or Monsatan's culpability, but we can also do things to help mitigate some of these problems that do come on to us. Now, you're not going to do uh, you're not going to do anaphylactic death with with baking soda. Okay, so there's a limit to everything. You eat a bagel that has sesame, and you're allergic to the bagel with the sesame. You're dead. You eat a, a burger that has a, a protein in it that you're not uh, you don't respond well. You could be dead. Most people at this point for the Impossible Burger went to the hospital with severe allergic reactions and respiratory problems. All right, so they survived, but who knows how close. So here we have, folks, if you want to study now, if you're, those of you who want to see why and how and what's out there studying and looking, peering through all the hackable journals, even the most aggressive cancers which have metastasized have been reversed with baking soda cancer treatments, although chemotherapy is too even the most aggressive can cancers which have metastasized have been reversed with baking soda cancer treatments. Although chemotherapy is toxic to all cells, it represents the only measure that oncologists employ in their practice to almost all cancer patients. In fact, 9 out of 10 cancer patients agree to chemotherapy first without investigating other less invasive options. And so, this is back to the what do we have available and what are we promoted. And what are it's our responsibility in this? Doctors and pharmaceutical companies may make money from it. Do you think that baking soda may be one of the things that Amazon's AI issues for you and your depression that it heard through its echo chamber? And not because it's effective, decreased morbidity, mortality, or diminishes any specific cancer rates. In fact, it does the opposite. Chemotherapy boosts cancer growth and uh, long-term mortality rates, and oncologists know it. A few years ago, University of uh, Arizona Cancer Center uh, member Dr. Mark Pagel received a $2 million grant from the National Institute of Health to study e effectiveness of personalized baking soda cancer treatment to breast, for breast cancer. And I want to say here, personalized baking soda tr cancer treatment. Again, everybody's different. Everyone's got to look at this thing particular, take responsibility, see, individually. Obviously, there are people in the know who have understood the say, uh, sodium bicarbonate that the same stuff has can save a person's life in the emergency room in a heartbeat is a primary cancer treatment option of the safest and most effective kind. Studies have shown the dietary 
measures uh, to boost biocarbonate levels and to increase the pH of the acidic tumors without upsetting the pH of the blood and healthy tissues. Animal models of uh, human breast cancer show that oral sodium bicarbonate does indeed have uh, make tumors more alkaline and inhibit metastases. So I'll stop reading. There's some links. You can go read the studies. Uh, look with your uh, with an objective eye. Don't just look with your hope in your heart. Uh, figure this stuff out. But there's a really simple natural system a setup that's available to us. Now I don't know if baking soda is natural. You don't find it in a tree. Uh, but nevertheless, it's available what we did for ourselves to help things that are, there's studies now. And uh, I ask you to put that in your bag of tricks as you're trying to figure out how to do something that you might need an answer. You need more information? Maybe maybe this is, there's enough studies here that will help you uh, to work that out for yourself. Again, even though we're imposed, like Dwayne Johnson, maybe he could help himself. I don't know. Just I know this is just breast cancer, and and that's not a that's not a limit to Mr. Johnson, but uh, in this regard. But uh, the point is, is that there may be some natural things that we can do. Will will our technocratic future opt for those, or or the things that are of the bottom line and, and controls? And to keep you trapped in that is another problem. So in this technocratic point and future, how this all works, how they're fu- funneling us down through that corridor. Uh, we're given ad- admonitions, uh, well, we're given an admonition, but not to us, to the soldiers that are implementing the oppression against us. And uh, we see this little story pop up relative to, again, your I, I told you, your iPhone's a central player in how they're going to give you this information. We have a natural way to go. We have this artificial way to go. And our choices are going to be here moving forward are important. And I don't mean just the choice we make, but I think we're going to have to turn around and we're going to have to force that there can't be certain choices if we want to protect all the little ones coming up here who don't have a clue about all this. Even the people that are growing up, I see maybe 10 years younger, 10 years old, younger than 10 years back. I mean, like after 2010 and back, there's there's a really... No clue in them. There's just no 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 capacity. Uh, so we have a another type of problem. I think I see here. But anyway, the uh, soldiers are told, don't look into the new iPhones uh, to avoid Face ID lockout. And so there's a yeah, Apple professes to make a certain security measures. Uh, the soldiers who are going to steal your information, who are going to look into your records because of, of what Echo presented into the phone you keep around with you because they're going to need that record when you have an emergency. It's probably required when you get in your car and the autonomous car in case there's an accident. It's not supposed to happen, but they have to protect against it. So you step out and get hit by another autonomous car. Uh, you're going to have to have a phone record in order for them to find out what kind of care you're going to need. Uh, well, those things are have security issues. Well, the cops are told don't look at them. Don't touch the thing right now as Apple starts to build in certain features. Now, I don't want to promote Apple. I say don't get the phone. Get uh, get the least amount of technology uh, up short of smart, because that's not so intelligent as you possibly can get. But here's telling us what's happening in the future. Uh, the Apple continues to update the iPhones and new security features. Law enforcement and other investigators are constantly playing catch-up, trying to find the best way to circumvent the protections or to grab evidence. I'm saying you need to take the same stance against what they're doing. You need to circumvent protect the protections of security they have and grab your evidence of their wrongdoing and stop playing catch-up. Get ahead of the game. We can get ahead of the game. They have to play catch-up. I don't know why people don't get this. Last month, Forbes reported on the first known instance of search warrant being used to unlock a subset suspect's iPhone X with their own face, leveraging iPhone X's face ID feature. Folks, if you got to do all this, you should not be using it. However, they're told now, don't touch this phone and look at it because it'll give you a demerit. If you want inside that phone, it'll demerit you for trying and having the wrong face looking at that can- at that phone. And if you touch the wrong button, it'll demerit your access. And you only get five tries. And so, this is an interesting little thing. My thought was more on the fact that they're going after the facial recognition. And once they get it, they get all your data. It's also tied to, again, the silent weapon quiet war. It is the core. This is where everyone's focusing is on this phone. And so if you don't have one, 
they're not going to be able to, you're not going to be vulnerable there. And so there is a viable reason to have phones. I'm asking you to reconsider whether or not you need one so capable. Maybe, maybe you don't. Uh, and maybe you might want to consider this in the face recognition and putting together certain things and building up the facts of uh, what they do and how they do it and stay ahead of them. If, and I'm not saying to do this, this is uh, something you really have to look at. If you think you can do this, and for an iPhone, I can't see how it wouldn't, wouldn't be effective. Uh, activist gets passport using a digitally altered photo of two different people. And this is working on the system of a hacking the data system by putting false information in. This is done in Germany. Uh, I'm not telling you to do this. This is really a serious problem if they can catch up to it. At this point, the attorneys, hopefully their experts say is correct, that uh, the, they don't know what they don't know what law is being broken in Germany to have you create uh, using two faces to interpolate the coordinates to make a third face and use that as your picture, so the picture that represents the ent entity on the passport. And this is being done as a, not just as a, the, the fact of wanting to put this picture, it's being done in protest, like a, for us in the United States, a First Amendment speech and art, uh, putting together those two to, to uh, circumvent and show the oppression that a passport is. And so uh, before we buy wholesale into all this, you need to be very well versed in this. Uh, I have a couple of ideas of what could happen wrong. Uh, since I don't know that that's a fact and haven't studied it, I don't want to say uh, but I understand that there may be a potential liability but if you're willing to take the chance like this woman is, and a lot of people in Germany are, they're going to move this plan up into a more more application. Uh, this may be some uh, theory on how you destroy the databases they're using to identify you. But understand, once you've done that, you may fall out of favor and or uh, you may fall out of an ability to keep moving around unless you understand how to use that condition to not allow you to be stopped. Remember, the passport is an oppressive a tool of oppression. It's a pool of tool of registration. In the United States, I actually can't find the need for a passport. So, but they'll impose one on you and they'll cause trouble for you, serious trouble, when you try to do things the way you have a right to travel. And not a driver's license. This is supposed to be the right of ingress and egress. They have attempt to impose this, these things to you, on you. And so there's a whole other study that can go on here. I don't want to address that. I'm just saying that there's people out in the world, even not in the country that, that supposedly has the right to, you know, free, freely to move around the country. You, you don't. More people don't. And you need this passport, and people are hacking the passport. They're hacking it with technology. They're creating a, they're, they're invalidating databases. I guess I could say you can too, but be very, very, very careful on how we start hacking back on the system as it, it, it starts to encroach. So, uh, again, we're not helpless, but we got to stay ahead. Again, the cops look for evidence. You need to look for evidence. They need to turn it around and apply it. And I think as we start to learn more how to do that in the right ways on very particular things, we start to expand uh, on our experience, on our capabilities, and be an example to others that can do this for themselves or work with you as you work work it through and expand your horizons to get back what they've been stealing from us from everything I've talked about today. Grimmer, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Appreciate all that. Uh, thank you to all the broadcasters that are out there that may be uh, syndicating the broadcast. I'm not sure who you are anymore. Uh, kind of got, it's kind of out there. And all y'all that re repost and rebrand or whatever the heck and favorite and like. F folks, like. I mean, why can't you like? Like like this for other people to see that something they might find in, in the broadcast. And I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs are nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
Well, that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>